Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world. With self-care strategies from Chinese medicine, functional medicine, Ayurveda, neuroscience, and beyond. I'm your host, Brody Welch, a licensed acupuncturist and transformation catalyst, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of A Healthy Curiosity on staying well with Chinese herbal medicine in a time of plague. I'm your host, Brody Welch, and today I'm speaking with a colleague who is having success helping people who are dealing with COVID-19, and she's helping them with herbal medicine and Qigong. Dr. Sandra Sabotich is a doctor of acupuncture and oriental medicine. She's practicing in Chicago. She is also a medical Qigong practitioner, certified Reiki master and teacher, and certified in medical pulse diagnosis. I am super excited to have Sandra on the show with me today because it's always fun to geek out with colleagues who are really steeped in what's working and get to learn from them and get to share what's working in my practice and to to be able to to invite all of you out there who may not be Chinese medicine experts into how we see this because really it's like we can look at COVID-19 like what I'm sure it's all anyone is thinking about a lot of times, and, and you're probably well aware of the Western medicine treatment options out there, but Chinese medicine has a very different way of looking at this virus as well as looking at health in general and how we go about restoring balance to a given individual depending on their particular presentation is something that Chinese medicine has to offer. And really, when we think about that in Wuhan, the people who were treated with a combination of both Chinese herbal medicine as well as Western medicine fared 30-something percent better than people who were just given the Western drugs alone. And so there really is a place for for Chinese herbal medicine to be of use to people who are dealing with respiratory stuff. Now, and I just want to, be, to put this caveat out there that I'm, I'm certainly not saying that any Chinese herbs can prevent or cure COVID-19. And this episode is not meant to be medical advice. What it is meant to be is education and just an empowerment of the fact that if you are suffering from something like this, that there may be help for, for you from someone who is steeped in the knowledge of Chinese herbal medicine. So, Dr. Sandra Subotic, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Tell me about a recent case that that you have successfully treated of COVID-19. So, yeah, so this case happens to be a patient of mine, and, and she's also a friend of mine. And she's 44 years old, single mom, you know, r- relatively healthy. And her partner had actually decided to go to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. And what's, what's interesting is that just yesterday I was reading a news article, which basically said the epicenter of COVID in Louisiana started at Mardi Gras. As Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> right. No social distancing is happening there. Well, right. So, but you know, this was the beginning of March. So, sure you know, things were still a little bit kind of up in the air. So anyway, so he gets back and he gets really sick with flu-like symptoms and he doesn't fit the criteria to to get a test, but he's very sick, high fever, all the symptomology. So he decides to self-quarantine for 10 days. And, you know, by the end of the 10 days, he was feeling better, still had symptomology. And she decided to go visit him thinking he was on the mend and probably no longer contagious. So four days later, she starts to develop symptoms. And, uh, you know, first it was the typical fatigue, sore throat, dry cough. She starts freaking out a little bit, right? Because everything she's heard about and read up until this point, those are kind of the symptoms we're, we're looking at. Yeah. So she's kind of freaking out about that, but then she's also thinking about work, right? She's a single mom, works full time. And so she's kind of like, do I go to work? I can't afford to miss any more days. What am I going to do? So she's kind of in this bind. And, you know, this is what we're seeing 
in our population at large right now too, right? People not being able to stay home, worried about missing work, can't properly social distance, right? This is, it's a huge problem right now. It's really highlighting how our healthcare system is, is so broken in that, oh. that what is what is good for one person is in fact good for everyone else on the planet. <laughs> and so right. it's like if we were all in a position to just listen to our bodies and stay home when we're sick without fear of getting fired or or not getting paid, yeah. that yeah, then we would have such a better handle on this epidemic. Well, I agree. And then, you know, and then as we know what that kind of worry does to the immune system, right? That's already compromised. Yeah. Chronic stress tends to not be a great thing for the immune system (laughs) with the increased cortisol. Yeah. Yeah. Not great. I mean, we see it. We see it in patients all the time, right? It's one of the biggest things. I'm, I'm constantly asking my patients if they can blow up their life and I'm only half kidding about it. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Or there's really like, what can you stop doing is another one of my questions. Yes. Yes. So, you know, so she's in this bind, right? And so she thinks, okay, she's been in the health and wellness industry for a long time. She's a chef. She runs the cooking school at Whole Foods. So, you know, she's, she's well-versed, right? In, in what she needs to be taking for her immune system. And at this point, she's probably starting a little bit late, but she goes to her go-to which is high dose zinc, high dose vitamin C, lots of lemon ginger tea. And she's thinking, okay, I'm going to take all this. I'm going to get some rest. I'm going to fight this thing off. All those things sound good to me. You? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. They're great. Mm-hmm. They're yep. great. I think that I think that maybe at this point, because she was already feeling sick, it might've been a little bit too late at this yeah. point, but, but nothing wrong with any of that. Those are great things. I take those things as well. I mean, you know, Vitamin D, I, I usually D. tend to recommend yeah. to patients. And absolutely. Yeah. I do I do a lot of medic- medicinal mushrooms. I mean, all of that mm-hmm. is great, right? Yep. And yet by themselves, often not enough, right? Like wow. that certainly like we can do things to to be on the side and to to support our Wei Qi, our protective chi. But if something's a virulent pathogen and you've been exposed, it's it can still get through. And oh, so yeah. So there's so there she's there she is. <laughs> Oh, right. so Her traditional Western things are not cut right. Out. <laughs> so there she is, and she, you know, here we are, forty-eight hours later, and she has this high fever set in, and she is full body aches, really severe fatigue, and so we're seeing this cytokine storm set in, right, with the fever, trying to kill off this pathogen. And at the same time, it's kind of damaging her body all at once, right? Because it's just, it's an onslaught. So she's sitting here and she sat with the fever for about two and a half days until she finally reached out to me. So we talked and, and you know, I was able to help her without needing to be exposed because um, what's beautiful about Chinese medicine is that I can listen to her symptoms and look at her tongue, which we can get into a little bit later, but that can give me a lot of information as far as what kind of herbs she needs. So that's exactly what we did. So I had her immediately send me pictures of her tongue. I asked her very specific questions about her symptomology and even more specifically about her water metabolism, which I think a lot of people don't think to ask about, but is very important. So I had her send me pictures and I prescribed a very specific herbal combination. I had her on that for about two days. I was having her send me pictures every single day and telling me about any changes that were happening. And as her tongue was changing and as her symptoms were changing, the herbs changed as well. So, so I'd love to dive a little deeper on that. Like what, yeah. what were, uh, f- for example, what was your diagnosis from a Chinese medicine perspective? So initially her tongue was really, th- had a really thick, greasy white coat, pale, and had this overlay of the most prominent yellow lines on either side of the midline that I had ever seen. I mean, it, it was so prominent that it almost looked fake. What and- did that suggest to you? So, so it was really interesting. So on the one hand, we have this underneath, we sort of have this cold and this, this stagnation of fluids, right? And a lot of cold damp, but Mm -hmm. on top of it, we have this heat forming as well, right? As we can see from those lines on either side of the tongue. And so it's almost like we're seeing this transforming into the Shaoyang stage. 
So if we're if we can bring people into this conversation a little bit, if we think about the tongue body, the tongue coating and the moisture and the shape of the tongue when we're when we're looking at the tongue. And so if we're looking at the coating on the tongue, it should be thin enough to see the color of the tongue body through it. If it's thick, then that can indicate that there's like the stagnant pond instead of the flowing stream, that there's too much what we call dampness in Chinese medicine. There's this turbidity that's hanging out in the body that we can't quite get rid of. And when that coat is on the white side, it's like a cold, damp situation. And when it's more on the yellow side or even like sometimes brown, we'll see that that is indicative of more of a damp heat presentation or a phlegm heat presentation. And that's going to determine whether the herbs that we use are going to be resolving cold, damp, or damp heat. Exactly. And and from a Western perspective, we can think of this as, you know, the tongue is the only muscle that we can see from the outside of the body. And what it shows us is not only the state of the three microbiomes, right? Respiratory, GI, urogenital, but it also shows us the microbiota within those three different aspects, right? So the microbiota and how much of it there is, whether they're hot, whether they're cold, this is what's guiding us in our formulas and our herbal choices. And literally, right, that the tongue coating is biofilms that have yeah. crawled up from our, our GI yeah. <laughs> microbiome. It is, it is the actual microbiota. And I, I think they have done, they've done lab tests where, where they can actually show this. So yeah, it's, it's so it's, gross and so awesome at the I same know. time. I, know. I love it. I know. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, and so, so we have this, these really old tongue maps that can show us what's going on in different parts of the body. And when we look at the very tip of the tongue, the very tip corresponds with the heart and just to the, the sides of that corresponds to the lung area. So we're, this is also a place that I imagine we get real curious about when someone is presenting with a respiratory infection. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, we want to look at the whole state. And so this is why it's really important to ask about the water metabolism too, right? Because you need to pay attention to all three of the microbiomes and how they're being affected. So this goes back to what you were talking about in the beginning in that Chinese medicine is really uniquely positioned to um, help out with this current crisis because we're not only looking at the virus, but we're looking at how it relates to each person's unique biology, right? So there's something to be said about that. And you can get very specific in how you are um, helping someone and how you are prescribing herbs because you are getting that specific. So it's, it's, it's quite amazing and, and wonderful. Um, so okay. back to your patient. So, yeah. Yes. So anyway, so I was at the clinic. I couldn't leave the clinic. There were, there were some limiting factors and she happened to have had Hoxiang Jenchi Tong at her house and I was able to get her some Sanren Tong. So I originally started off with these two formulas and as her tongue started, so these two formulas actually helped to bring her fever down within 24 hours from 102.6 down to a hundred. So it was stable at a hundred. And at this, at before this point, nothing could make the fever budge. I mean, it was really erratic. She was trying to take Tylenol. It was helping a little bit, but nothing was really working. She was getting really worried. And quite frankly, so was I. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so this brought her fever down to 100. And her tongue actually changed pretty quickly too. So those, the yellow on either side of the midline had all but disappeared. And what I started seeing was that the thick white tongue coat actually started to get a little bit more intense. And what you'll see a lot of times when you are draining damp and clearing out phlegm, the tongue coat will get a little bit worse before, before it gets better. Yeah. Right. Because it's clearing things out, right? We're, we're kind of 
we're draining the swamps. There could be some die off of that (laughs) aforementioned microbiota. And, and really like, I think it's important to note for people who are, have no idea what these formulas are, is that they're not these bitter cold formulas, right? Like Huoshang Zhengqishan is, is a formula that's indicated when there is cold and dampness present, you know? And so it's like, it's herbs that might be classified as aromatic and somewhat warming, but yet it was enough to bring the fever down because in this case, that's because that was the problem. And San Rentang, same deal, is that a tra- draining dampness from it's literally three seeds, one seed per area of the body or per microbiome. Yes. And we can get into that a little bit more too. Um, and w- I can give a little bit of some Western points of view here um, Great. Too, Go for as it. well, which, which is good. But so we use that formula and she, her cough um, had turned to one that was, so it had started out as dry, but now she was producing all of this really thick yellow phlegm. So um, her body aches had gone down, her fever had gone down. And at this point I switched her to San Rentang Shao Chai Hutong which is one of the formulas that they had been using in China for the pneumonia phase. Pneumonia phase, yes. Uh-huh. So when when the pattern was appropriate, and from what I was seeing and from her symptomology, this was what was appropriate at the time. So we give this within 24 hours, the fever goes down to normal, and within two days, the chest starts clearing up. The mucus goes down, it turns to clear. So things really just started resolving actually really quickly, quicker than I actually thought it was going to start resolving. So I was pleasantly surprised. But yeah, so she was she was on her way to feeling better. And I, I had actually kept her on that formula for uh, about four or five days because I wanted to make sure that um, the pathogen had cleared and I wanted to make sure that her lungs were clear. So I kept her on that for a little bit. Um, and she she recovered really, really nicely. So yeah, so we can just dive into the formulas just really quickly here. And again, just to reiterate, these are the formulas that worked for this case presentation based on her tongue, based on her symptomology. As you know, Brody, we have had some really great information coming in from China, from docs on the ground, telling us about the formulas that they've been using on patients in hospitals, what's been working, what hasn't been working. And so we have this wonderful kind of vault of information of formulas that have been working, and we can use those as a guide and then modify as we need to with patients that we're seeing. So so that's been yes. really, really wonderful. So these formulas are, are three that have been being used with success. And again, these fit the patient's pattern and presentation. Um, so Shao Chai Hutong is probably one of the most readily prescribed formulas in the world, maybe. And it's generally regarded as very safe. And so from a Western medicine perspective, it helps to restore water metabolism. It destroys biofilms. It reduces stress. And interestingly, there have been a couple of studies to suggest that it, inter- that it interrupts viral transcription. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Right, because we know that if the virus can't replicate, then it has to eventually die off. Yes. So um, that's really, really cool. And then San Rentang. San Rentang is such a cool formula. <laughs> I'm sorry, I like geek out over this, but San Rentang is such a cool formula because from the Eastern side, from a from a Chinese medicine perspective, it clears damp heat, but it's clearing it from the qi level. And it does this by unblocking the lung chi and then transforming and drying dampness from the middle jowl and the lower jowl. So it's affecting all three microbiomes, but it's doing it in a gentle enough way that it's not going to affect the kidneys, right? Which is great. I mean, it's just, it's such a cool formula. And from a Western perspective, it really, that's what it does. It restores homeostasis in all of the three microbiome, the main microbiomes of the body, respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urogenital, which is so awesome. And uh, lastly, Huoxiang Zhenqitong is a formula that's actually used a lot in China. And people kind of know to go to this formula when they are getting the first signs of a cold when they're having GI upset. A lot of people use it for to prevent a hangover. 
it's antiviral, antibacterial, it regulates GI function, it relieves nausea really, really well. And if you've been keeping up on the reports with this virus, a lot of people are having GI distress and a lot of nausea. Yes. And and it's one of those formulas that sits on my shelf because I have a very, or prior to this, had a very narrow conception of what it was for, yes. right? I was really only prescribing it for acute gastrointestinal illnesses, you know, that yes. were with, with nausea and vomiting and that kind of thing, diarrhea. Yes. So, but recognizing that like, okay, it's, yes, it's, it's wonderful for transforming dampness in the middle burner and for, and for kicking things out <laughs> once they came, but yes. also can be useful, uh, especially because the middle burner supports the lungs in this way that it could be a really important thing to have on board for respiratory stuff, especially when like what what's I think kind of special about COVID-19 is that that it does present with so so much at least half the time as from what i understand with gastrointestinal symptoms absolutely and and it has been and maybe we need to watch our verbiage here but um we have from our perspective we have given it sort of a signature as as a damp plague right that's that's what it's been called sort of from um from our perspective so we know that it tends to cause a lot of damp and and what we're seeing is that even the people that are exhibiting a lot of dryness the dryness isn't coming from true dryness it's actually coming from the fluids being occluded by phlegm and dampness Right? So it's so. like there's the fluids are so sticky and gunky that the good fluids can't do their job. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Because that's, that's sometimes uh, deceptive, right? When we're, when we're thinking about like people having a dry cough and not being able to, to cough anything up, it's not because there isn't phlegm there. Yes, right? absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and this is where our pattern differentiation and, you know, looking at tongues is, is helps us, right? Mm-hmm. So it helps us be able to approach this in a very unique way. Yeah. I want to get into some things that people can do. So like so these formulas can be amazing if the presentation matches, um, but certainly a, a Chinese herbal provider would be able to, to get super specific on what a given individual should be taking because just because it's natural and just because it can be helpful for some people, it can be dead wrong if, you, if the pattern is wrong or if the stage is wrong. One more herb question I had for you is that I know a lot of practitioners out there are thinking like, so there's, there's this like thousands of years of classical Chinese medicine, the way that China, as you might imagine, um, right? People have seen people through lots of times of plague, and lo- there's been a lot written about what to do if you see these symptoms with these signs, and and in this particular case, and all these, all the stuff that we've got from our classical texts. But then we also have these modern formulas that we know are like antiviral or that, you know, some, something like a Gan Mao Ling or a Chuan Xinlian or like the things that, that people might be prescribing simply because they um, have antiviral properties. And I'm just curious as to your take on mixing the two, right? Is it a good idea to stack something like a Gan Mao Ling or, you know, a- along with some of these classical formulas, or is that working across purposes? So I try to stay with treat what you see. Mm-hmm. So I always stick with pattern presentation and I try not to look at formulas from that Western perspective, because I think that you're trying to work from two different models and they don't always stack up to one another. So I think for Chinese medicine practitioners, I think the best way to do it is to treat what you see, rely on your diagnostic skills, and then prescribe appropriately. And I I certainly, you know, I, I learned pulse from Jimmy Chang. I do a lot of, you know, formula combining. So I'm not straight Shang Han Lun or Wen Bing. I just, I like to do what works. And so I do combine things, but I combine them based on the patterns that are presenting. Mm-hmm. So I think we need to be careful about trying to put two different vantage points on top of each other and just stick with what we know. 
Yeah, it's I, I, I pe- very people that I respect deeply uh, have weighed in differently on this issue, and so I'm, I'm still just collecting data. I appreciate knowing yeah. where you stand on that. Well, and I think yeah. you know, I think if we start to look at the formulas, what you'll mm-hmm. find is that most of the formulas you're using, if you dissect them, are antiviral, are antibacterial. They have her- herbs in them that are doing these things, but you're not picking them specifically for that reason you're using your Chinese diagnostics, right? And then you're prescribing herbs appropriately. And those herbs are doing those things by proxy. It's kind of the way I see it. Yeah. And and it's interesting. I, I think that like the more trust and faith we have in the fact that this medicine has withstood the test of time and is continuing to be to to like we we still like in the in this day and age with the internet we've already seen 60,000 cases of this in China right i mean right. maybe like not as personally but there's plenty of information out there about how things are working so i, I think yeah. it's um, i think it's amazing just that the the speed at which we can be coming up with it being able to put our collective heads together and Absolutely. figure out what might be working I'd love to switch over to what could be working for from a qigong perspective, right? From I, I know there's there's breathing exercises, there is there's movements, there's acupressure, there's plenty of things that people can be doing on themselves that I feel are really do no harm practices that could be great to get into as far as empowering people to take care of themselves. Absolutely. There um I as you know, I I did some qigong videos um that are specifically focused on breathing. And I teach my patients, um, especially right now, some very specific breathing exercises that help to open up the lung and actually help to induce sweating, which is what we want, right? Because the Mm -hmm. sweat is what helps us kick out those pathogens. Yeah. That, that image of something coming in from the outside and like permeating the aura, that first layer of the protective chi. And so one way that we can kick it back out is to sweat, right? To open the pores and to, to project the energy upward and outward. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's really, you know, p- breathing is, and, and Qigong are really, really effective. And I, I think they're really easy to dismiss because they look so simple, yeah. but they can be profoundly effective. Um, well, it's like saying that the breath, it, you know, the breath is the fastest way to affect our whole central nervous oh, system and our oh. whole hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access. And it's free and easily available to everyone at all times. And Absolutely. so it's it's one of those things where like we shouldn't overlook it just because we can all do it without with very little training. <laughs> so I, so with that caveat, let's do let's do the let's do the immune boosting breathing thing. Okay. Yeah. So this is something that I've been teaching all of my patients right now, especially. So I'm gonna try and explain it to you guys without you seeing me, and I'm gonna try really hard to be clear about this. We got this. So, So you basically, you start in and you want to take a breath in, but you want to make sure that you're breathing into the chest and not into the belly because we're trying to expand the chest and really focus on the lungs. And a really quick way to do that, to make sure you're doing that is to breathe in and put your hands on the side of your ribs. And if you feel your ribs moving outwards, then you know you're doing it right. Okay. So you're going to breathe into your chest and you're going to hold it ideally for 30 seconds. Okay. If you can't do 30 seconds, totally fine. You want to work yourself up to 30 seconds, 30 seconds, or as long as you can, if that's as long as you can. Absolutely. So you breathe in, you hold for 30 seconds, you put your chin to your chest so that you open up the back of your neck. And as you're holding your breath, you want to either take a scarf and create friction on the back of your neck to create heat and kind of help that sweat to come up, or you can just use your hands and just kind of massage the back of your neck. Like a Um, delicate stroking from back to front to move your lymph. Yes, absolutely. And if you want to get really fancy, you can add in some nasal humming. <laughs> so on the exhale, humming. right? Like yeah. so we, we've so yeah. we've just held like just to, to keep it super simple. We're inhaling into the chest and holding the breath for thirty seconds or as long as possible. And then as we exhale, we're gonna hum and focus on the space between the eyebrows and feel the bones in the face vibrate. Yes, absolutely. So, and you, you'll and you'll hear yourself, right? So you'll be like. Mm, and you'll mm. feel that, yeah, you'll feel that vibration up in your eyebrows, between the eyes, 
Um, and that really helps to kind of loosen up any phlegm, anything that's up in the sinuses, gets things moving. And so it's quite lovely. So if you put it all together, you take your breath in, hold for 30 seconds, chin to chest, massage the back of your neck, and mm, hum it out. Yep. And there you go. And so you want to repeat that eight times. So basically, that's a practice that could take five minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And and you want to start sweating. And if you notice that you're doing it and you're not sweating easily, that tells you that you need we need to work on the immune system a little bit because you should start noticing that it becomes easier and easier for you to sweat while you're doing that. I love that. So super simple and and someone can practice it. I also love that um and again this is I'm going to try to describe this in a way that where a visual might be more indicated, but essentially it's if starting standing up, gently folding forward as you exhale, letting the arms swing behind you. And then as you inhale, straighten up, let the arms swing up and with loose fists, let them land just underneath the collarbones, sort of gently thwacking your chest. So it's an exhale, Inhale it, exhale as you fold forward, inhale as you stand, bring the arms up overhead, and continue inhaling as the, the loose fists grab the good, yummy chi from the air and pull it into the lungs. So Ooh. you're essentially just hitting yourself at lung one or lung two or split, you know, like just somewhere on the upper chest. You're, the percussion of your hands landing on the chest helps to kind of bang on the pipes and dislodge the phlegm in the interior. Yeah. And as we're standing, like if we're doing this from a standing position, in Chinese medicine, it's the kidneys that grasp the chi from the lungs and bring it down, and the kidneys roll the lower back and are, and live in the lower back. So as we're folding forward, you can actually visualize the kidneys like magnetizing, and as you stand up and allow the arms to swing and just let the force of gravity dr- and let the elbows bend and let the fists come into the chest, uh, then it's like you're bringing that fresh, beautiful, yummy chi into the lungs, and you can do that 39 times. <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> the Taoists really like the number three a lot. You know, so basically, yeah. don't worry about 39. Just do it until, um, until you feel a difference. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, another, this might be a good time to bring up too, that there's some really amazing breathing techniques to help us with our anxiety. Um, there's, there's quite a bit of collective anxiety right now as makes sense with everything. Really? Hadn't yeah. noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah every, there is. Everyone's, Let's... In, everyone's in fight or flight. Yes. <laughs> it's a problem. So there's, there's this breathing technique that I really, really love. And it's, it's very simple, but it's quite profound. And it works very quickly to snap your body out of fight or flight. And it's the four, seven, eight breath. That's and, a great one. Oh, yeah. And so all that means is that you breathe in for four, you hold your breath for seven, and then you breathe out for eight. And you just keep doing this and you can do it for as long as you want, but you'll start to notice within the first few minutes that things really start changing and your body really starts to relax. And you can do this sitting up, you can do it lying down. It's quite profound and it's been very helpful for me. It's been very helpful for many of my patients and it's very simple to do. Love it. I love it. And that really... Yeah, four, seven, eight breathing is super fast. I also love alternate nostril breathing for the same purpose, or even just abdominal breathing, just focusing on the low belly, breathing in and expanding the low belly, breathing out and bringing the low belly towards the spine, um, focusing it, really anything that for you moves the needle on and helping you feel more relaxed is going to be really important. Yes. Also, um, I'm wondering if you have any other self-care tips out there for people who are dealing with respiratory stuff that can be like safely talked about. I, I've been recommending essential oils, you know, in terms of like of just helping to open the chest. So something like smelling eucalyptus or putting a few drops in a bath that can be or or, or a steam can yes. be can be really lovely to open the chest or even putting them on an acupoint or two, um, yep. like those upper chest lung points or down uh, down by the wrist on the lung I, channel. Yes. yes, I have been recommending that too, actually. And I, if people have a vaporizer or a humidifier, I have them, you know, ask them to put it in there. Just put your face over some steam. All of that is quite lovely. And I think that as long as you're trying to keep yourself relaxed, getting good sleep, trying to eat relatively 
healthy. I know that's really hard right now because stores are out of a lot of things and, you know, there's a lot of anxiety. So we tend to want to go towards comfort food. But if we can really try to get some movement in each day, do these breathing exercises, do the, do that um, Qigong practice, do these essential oils, all of that together is absolutely amazing. And, and they're quick, right? It's a lot of things, but they're really quick and easy to do. And they can be, make a profound difference. I love that you emphasize quick and easy because it really is. It's like if if we're self quarantining, if we're home all day long, it can be really surprisingly simple to start a new healthy routine by hanging it on something that we're already doing, right? So whether that is just that adding it onto your morning brushing your teeth routine, you know, that just it can be can be pretty easy to simply stack up uh, five minutes of qigong or breathing. Yes. As as a potentially like a new habit, it's an opportunity, right, it, to embrace the disruption and allow it to work for us instead of against us. Absolutely. Um, I've also been having people gargle with salt water in the morning and at night, um, just as an extra quick thing that you can do, which is a nice preventative. You know, gargling with warm salt water is is a very nice thing to do, and usually when we're exposed to viruses, first they'll get either into the nose or in through the mouth. And so if we can do things to prevent them from going in deeper, that's a really good way to prevent them from getting more um, more intense. So saltwater gargling, good. Yeah, I, w- I would add to that using uh, neti pot every day. Nasal rinsing is some- yeah. is part of my routine because, yeah, again, if they if I can if I can treat something if I can disrupt its replication and prevent it from multiplying before it can kind of at critical mass take over my system, that's what I'm going to want to do. Absolutely, and and you know, I think it's I just want to put out there too that we can't. Um, we can't dismiss how important it is to just try and keep ourselves calm and happy. I have been trying to really minimize my social media time and my exposure to just reading a bunch of different articles and and things. I mean, I need to stay up to date on stuff, but I also don't want to be inundated. I try to make time to watch things that are funny, that are making me laugh out loud, um, because it's really important not only for our mental state, but for our immune systems. I mean, what, we, what do you recommend that can make us laugh out loud, Sandra? I'd like I to just, know. <laughs> oh, I, I, so I really like, um, like just like really funny movies or maybe like those really cute, like animal videos, Awesome. Put up, you know what I mean? Or like funny TV shows, whatever it might be, just something mm-hmm. that is funny and not too deep and doesn't require my mind to think too much is really good to help me disconnect from the collective anxiety that we're all feeling and and for good reason right there's there's a lot going on um not only with this virus but in the world at large right now and so any moment that we can take to disconnect from that i think is really important and it's very important for our health do you have a practice that helps you just get shake off the fear Apart, you know, like I love, I love the laughter cure. I love that. And I, I was hoping for some concrete recommendations of like, <laughs> what, what are you actually watching and listening to that's making okay. you laugh? Because so, that's awesome information. Oh, uh, I, I just like whatever I can find that makes me laugh. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Shows like, um, I don't know if you know the show New Girl. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, um, totally. It, it makes me laugh every time. So, you know, things like that, that I don't have to think about too much. Um and my practice, so I have been meditating for many, many years, and I actually do it twice a day, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night. And I try to end with a couple of minutes of a gratitude practice where I just go through all of the things that I'm grateful for in my life. And that really helps to ground me and stabilize my emotions. What I have been doing throughout the day since this whole thing has started and I have been quarantined is going outside because it's been relatively nice the past couple of days in Chicago and walking barefoot in the grass in my backyard just for a couple of minutes, just to kind of help ground everything out. That's very helpful for me. Yeah. And just Great. trying to watch and listen to things that are funny. <laughs> that's, that's my routine right now. I think it's so important. If people are interested in connecting with you, where should they do that? Sure. The easiest way to connect with me, um, if you're in Chicago, I am at um, Whole Health Chicago. 
or you can email me at Dr. Sandra Acupuncture at yahoo.com. Beautiful. Thanks so much. Yeah. If people are interested in connecting with me on a Chinese herbal basis or on a coaching basis, you can visit me at brodywelch.com. And I so appreciate each and every one of you for listening today. And hopefully this is empowering you to recognize that there are there are multiple ways of looking at our health. There's multiple paths towards recreating balance in the ecosystem that is you. Thanks for listening today. To check out the show notes, get on my email list or drop me a line, head to brodywelch.com. That's Brody with an IE and Welch with a CH. I'd love to hear from you. If you learned something new or feel inspired to try something different in your life, I'd love for you to pay it forward by sharing this episode with a friend who you think could also benefit and give them a reason to listen. You'll be helping to create a world where we encourage each other to embody self-respect. Till next time, be good to yourself.